Society going backwards because this side isn't. Uh, John Hayes. Mr Chairman, I move that the question be now put. Oh, yeah, Sue Maroney. Mr Chair, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on the taxation annual rates returns filing remedial matters bill and uh, speaking on part one, which in fact, um, Mr Chair, I think is the most disappointing part of this bill because it simply reinstates or puts in place the annual taxation regime that was brought in by this government in 2010. And as we've heard, I, I've called it disappointing, um, part one, but in fact it's actually damaging. It's actually damaging. Because as we've heard from uh, many of my learned colleagues, that actually reinforcing and endorsing the tax switch from 2010, or as many of the people I come across these days call it, the tax swindle, the tax swindle of 2010, is in fact, in, is in fact hurting our country. It is damaging to our country because this is the part of the bill that entrenches the growing inequality that is happening in New Zealand society. And it only takes three lines in this particular bill to do it. And it might be interesting for members of the public who are listening to this debate to know that all of the issues that we're traversing here from the Labour side of the House, because we are concerned about the direction of the country, we do not accept that it's OK for the economy to be tanking in the way it is. We do not accept that it's OK for people's incomes to be dropping versus their cost of living. We do not accept that it's OK that the only brighter future the New Zealanders are finding at the moment is to buy a ticket to go across to Tasman and relocate their families there. We do not believe that that is OK and that that's a good enough future for this country. It only takes three lines in this particular bill that does all this damage. Because effectively what this part does is says that we're just going to continue on with the regime that's got us in the place that we're in. And that regime is one that this government particularly put in place, and specifically put in place, that grows inequality. They did it in 2010. They introduced GST. And GST, of course, um, impacts on every single person, but it impacts mostly on low-income people because low-income people spend every cent they earn just to make ends meet, just to get by on a week-to-week -week basis. So that means that every dollar they earn is subjected to GST. However, for people on very high incomes, they are only spending a small proportion of their weekly income and therefore having to pay out the higher GST that that government put in place. And let's not forget that they put that higher GST in place without telling the electorate they were going to do it before they were elected. They went to the election pretending that they would not raise GST. In fact, John Key promised he wouldn't raise GST. And then after they won the Treasury benches, what did they do in one of their very first budgets? They raised GST. And they told, they told the New Zealand public that they wouldn't do that. They promised, in fact, that they wouldn't do it. But, but there you go. That's what they did. They did that on the basis of a so-called fiscally neutral tra tax switch, which brought in the income tax regime that we are reinforcing and endorsing in this part one of this bill here this evening, Mr, Mr. Chair. And that income tax, that new income tax regime, is the very mechanism, combined with the GST that I just described, that has specifically driven the growth in inequality in New Zealand, specifically revved it up. When they talked about supercharging the economy, actually that government planned to supercharge the growing inequality gap. That's what they supercharged, and they supercharged it by bringing in this particular set of income tax uh, uh, changes that we're now uh, reinforcing and endorsing in part one of this bill. Because what we know is the top 10 per cent of income earners in this country got vast amounts of income back. In fact, I've stood in this House before and, um, and accused the Prime Minister of pocketing personally $1,000 a week extra in tax cuts from that particular regime, and he's never denied it. Now, if it was not true, I would expect the Prime Minister to actually be denying that in Parliament, but he never has. 
because the truth is that people on very high incomes did pocket in the order of an extra $1,000 a week. That's not just what they're earning, that's the extra amount that they got the same time as low income, Mr Chair. Um, Sue Maroney. The same time as low income people actually got, got a tax cut that was way, way smaller, smaller than, uh, certainly smaller than $1,000 a week. Most of the people in uh, the area that I come from, in Hamilton, uh, record having, having got about um, $20 a week in tax cuts. Now, by the time they'd suffered that increase in GST, that was wiped out. But if, also, if they had young families, if they had young children, it was more than wiped out by the increase of the early childhood education fees that actually happened in the same budget in 2010. So the costs on New Zealand families have increased under this government, but this income tax regime that we are reinforcing here in part one is actually the very specific mechanism that has grown inequality in New Zealand. And that's not good for anyone, Mr, Mr. Chair, because while it's particularly not good for those people who are suffering the inequality and, and suffering at the poverty end of, of the spectrum, actually we all lose. We all lose from an unequal society because there, are, there is research for Africa, literally, and I probably shouldn't talk about that continent uh, when I'm referring to inequalities and poverty, but there is a lot of research that reinforces that unequal societies actually have the largest amount of social problems. And don't we see that reflected in our own country? With growing inequality that is reinforced by this income tax regime that we are now establishing in this bill that we're talking about tonight, with that growing inequality comes growing crime, it comes growing underachievement in education, and all the associated problems that come in society. So we all pay, Mr Chair, when we get this wrong. And part one is reinforcing a tax regime that is growing inequality in our country. And it shows that the government doesn't have a plan to do anything different. It doesn't really understand the pressures on families at the moment. And it doesn't think that there's anything necessary to change the current situation in this country. They find it perfectly acceptable that the economy is flatlining. They find it perfectly acceptable that thousands of New Zealanders are, are just leaving in their drives to go to Australia because that's the only way they can see a future for their families. They think that it's OK. Well, on this side of the House, we don't think it's OK. We think that the economy and the income tax regime does need a bit of a shake-up, and we particularly want to start thinking about other ways, other ways apart from income, that we can actually uh, we can get some, some income from tax reform. So it's Labor that's coming up with the fresh ideas that will give this economy a kick-start. It's Labor that's got the courage to actually address four big issues that are facing our economy. And in fact, if this government had the courage to do the same thing, it would be Order. this part of this Order. bill. Order. Um, the member cannot infer that someone or a party does not have courage. I'll ask the member to withdraw that comment. I withdraw that comment, um, Mr Chair, and uh, I withdraw that comment. What I was trying to describe um, was the difference between Labor and National, with Labor having the courage, actually having the courage to address these four big issues. And what are those four big issues? Well, we actually need to deal with the capital gains tax issue in this country, because we're one of only two countries, three countries in the OECD, three countries in the OECD, who don't face up to this issue. The unfairness that people with so much extra income that they can invest in um, uh, houses other than the one that their family lives in as investment properties. And when they sell, when they sell those houses and earn a lot of capital gain from that, that there's not one cent of tax paid on that particular income. So that's what we have. We have a, a capital gains tax problem in this country, and that government's not fronting up to that. We also need to increase our savings through Universal KiwiSaver, and it was Labor 
that actually had that vision. Talk about the brighter future. This is where it resides, on this side, because it was Labor that brought in Kiwi Saver. It's Labor that has the plan to move that through to being a universal savings scheme. And it's also Labor that will establish research and development tax credits. Members, we move to the vote on part one. The question is a part one stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. The ayes have it. No. Party votes called for. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 8 votes in favour. Māori Party. 2 votes in favour. Mana. 1 vote opposed. Action New Zealand. 1 vote in favour. United Future. 1, One vote, vote in favour. <laughs> Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 71, the noes are 49, part one will stand part. We now move to part two. This is debate on clauses four to 98. The question is that part two stand part. Mr Chair. Uh, Dr David Clark. Mr Chair, uh, I'm delighted to take a call on part two 